that this is an issue coming up. But for the military, here's the bigger issue about this, and I really need to stress this with you. Who makes most of your force? White guys. Enlisted. Enlisted white guys. Who have been deployed several times. Whose children, these boys, have seen that. Traditionally, recruitment has come up because it's a family generation and down. What will happen with our numbers? They're going to go down, and we're going to be hurting in a few years. Number two, what's going on is the changing. How many of you ever go to the ITSCC conference? The ITSCC conference is down in Orlando every year. It's the International Technology Simulation Education Conference. Every single military force from around the world, including ours, is there. I go every year because I want to see who's showing up. Which of the young people showing up because we're great that in terms of technology. The challenge is, if we're talking about women and minorities, we need to make sure that our women and minorities are showing up at that conference because that's the future of our force. Knowing how to use bodies, knowing how to use simulation, knowing how to use computers. This slide. So this is Working Mother Magazine, um, Working Mother Media, the, the people who both created diversity past practices did a huge resource, a research about multicultural women moving up to senior ranks. When they did the research, they thought that when we talk about multicultural women at senior ranks, what would we find out? That it was because there were people of color supporting each other. They thought that it was these women sponsoring each other. The research actually played out that 40% of the multicultural women say the most important career-related developmental relationship was with a Caucasian man. That doesn't mean that the others weren't there, but the numbers weren't there. 23%, 20% for women, helping women. But 40% of Caucasian men. We need to know that if we're increasing that, we have to make sure that we're engaged. Is that correct? Say yes. Next slide, please. I know that you like that one. All right, the next slide says, don't go in because that's where I want to be. <laughs> We've been talking about it, and I just like to tell things the way it is. Diversity has become a code word for white guys and everybody but me. We all use code words, whether we're in the Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, right? We have code. This is a code. Everybody but me. Now, it's really, I, I found it fascinating that you all discuss it about what, how is diversity defined. Because I went online, and as of February 5th, 2009, the Department of Defense Director said that defines diversity as the different characteristics and attributes of individuals. So what does it mean if there's a code word of everybody but me? If most of your force is white guys, how are you engaging them? How are you acknowledging the wealth of experience and innovation that they're bringing to the table? How are you acknowledging those people who are your friends, who've been your sponsors? We definitely know something else. Because it's become a code word for everybody got me, they don't even sometimes know that they can show up if you have an event for African American history month. They don't realize that they could show up. Most of us have never invited them. If it's a Hispanic Heritage Month, do we invite and say, you're the first to come on and play with me? It can't just be a top down, it's got to be us reaching out also. Next slide. In Atlanta Magazine, 2009, this was this past February, this reflected the research that we found. I have interviewed thousands of white men across the country. Military, corporate, manufacturing, blue collar. These were the words I heard. Because most of our programs will talk about white privilege. I am not saying that white privilege does not exist. Let me say that to the tape. I am 
I'm not saying that white privilege doesn't exist. What I am saying is that what we've done is deny the individual characteristics, the individual behaviors, beliefs of the white guys surrounding us. If you are not a military association right now, and you are not in uniform, I would ask every guy that's wearing a pair of khaki pants to stand up. And we get a lot of guys standing up with khaki pants. Most of them would have blue shirts. And everybody would think that they're all wearing the same thing. Is that correct? They're a uniform. I got into this business because I used to be in menswear manufacturing. Never knew why God gave me that job. I traveled all around the country with 126 pairs of khaki pants. <coughs> Don't know why I went that way. Now I know. We had 126 different variations of khaki pants because men choose their pants particular to who they are. Some have big butts, some have small butts, some like cuffs, some like not cuffs, some like polyester, some like cotton. And just as they are diversity in the khaki pants that they pick, they had to conform and lose who they are in the process. And sometimes in our training in the military, isn't that what basic does? Eliminate that. Become one. Let's have this feeling together. By the way, thank you so much because I transformed my son's life. Now he just hangs at everything before he didn't. <laughs> we have to understand who we're dealing with. We have to understand if you that there are three things. White man privilege does exist. And it does exist, and there is diversity amongst white guys. But there are three things that white guys know. One, they know they are not diverse. Oh, yes, we have a little words, but they don't know how they're diverse. We never talk about it for them. Two, they're responsible. This is what they've got out of training. There's, they're responsible for other people's choices. Let me repeat that. They have learned through diversity training. They are responsible for other people's choices. So, generals, admirals, did you have to make tough choices to move up rank? Was anybody, I mean, there might have been somebody there kicking your butt to get to the next level, promote to potential, moving up rank. But we did have to go. But I'll answer questions at, at the end, if that's okay with you, because I just want to get some information out there. But you're, you chose a path. You chose to step up. You chose to put out there. We have to remember that. But in diversity training, sometimes we, we make it the white guy's responsibility. And I know I'm ticking off some people. But I call myself. Whatever I just was thinking, I don't want to blame I call myself an uncomfortable strategist. I like to make people uncomfortable. I think that unless we make people uncomfortable, we can't grow. Unless you can climb that 10 foot thing, you know, and scale it up, climb over the lower wall and drop down, you have to be uncomfortable. Do you all remember when you've gone through P PT and you haven't done PT in a while? Remember all that? You made yourself uncomfortable before you had your chest, didn't you? Because now you were 50 and you didn't move the same way you did when you were 20. So we have to be willing to be uncomfortable.